Hey there, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us and welcome to the next session for Global Partnerships Day. I'm Sean Saul, co-founder and SVP of Sales for Amir for Partner Eyes, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Nick Yates, Performance Account Director at Global Affiliate and Partner Marketing Agency Silverbean. Nick was recently featured in the Performance in uh, Top 50 and has vast pure view over clients varying in their vertical size and partner program setup which will provide some great insight for us in this session and around the evolution of the industry. So Nick, let's jump straight in. Um, question from me to kick things off. From the viewpoint of an agency, how do you believe the partner channel has fared during the last 12 to 18 months? Sounds good. I think in general, the, the overall affiliate and partner marketing channel is prospered, to be honest. I think um, obviously in the last 12 to 18 months, we've had the effect of COVID, but to be honest, we've seen those brands that have been affected negatively by COVID kind of want to actually shift towards more of a CPA model and maybe move away from CPC and CPM. So it's, it's pushed those brands in. For the brands that have actually prospered through COVID though, um, those brands are actually looking at how they can gain competitive advantage. And, and one of them things is the affiliate and partner marketing channel. So we're seeing them brands actually want to invest more within the channel and, and develop and, and kind of do more advanced strategies as well, which is really good. Um, that kind of brings me on to, to kind of strategies as well that, that have kind of shifted. I think we, we've seen the, the channel mature more within the last 12 to 18 months. We've seen, certainly seen a, a more interest really around brand to brand partnerships, uh, strategic content, influencers and so on. Um, so that's really helped the, the channel in regards to just its, its overall reputation really and, and what managers are now saying around the affiliate partner channel and the opportunity there as well and then just from an agency point of view i think like all agencies we, we've probably seen a bit of a downturn um, especially when covid hit first of all just because we, we did have some clients obviously within uh travel um, and ticketing for example which had a negative impact but since then we, we have really thrived and grew um, we, we've kind of signed some really big clients in the last few months um, and, and I think as an agency, kind of still sort of been a, a, a now kind of been well positioned in the market, should we say, um, to, to prosper in the next 12 to 24 months as well. Good, good answer. Um, that, all sounds, that all sounds right. Actually, just, just one quick thing there. Do you think that, um, do you think that may be, obviously more and more brands are moving away from kind of they want that the agency's kind of what, what is it about the agency's strategic viewpoint then maybe that, that brands are preferring over maybe traditional kind of network management um for us i think it's strategic insight and, and expertise i think what really has shifted in the last 12 to 18 months is um how brands are, are looking at the channel more and to be honest they've, they've maybe been found out in regards to um the lack of support and the lack of strategic expertise that 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 is maybe has been offered by other kind of agencies or, or maybe it's in-house they want to kind of develop their learning and things like that and i think for us then just being seen as an expert within the industry and to be honest being able to give impartial advice moving forwards as well in, in regards to kind of what are the brand's object objectives and um and how can we support with that um moving forward from from your side as well i mean partnerize has shifted in the last kind of few months as well and and you guys are now kind of bringing together this kind of tech and services um proposition really like what, what what's all that about and, and how are you guys looking to address that moving forwards as well yeah that's a that's a good question actually mate so and obviously and, and, and an obvious one actually probably to kick off with but uh i think you know when when partners acquired pepper jam we understood the value that they brought not only in terms of their software capabilities but also the breadth of the experience in in terms of their, their account management if you like in the development so the evolution or the transition if you like of partnerize offering the same level of service to all clients was kind of a logical next step and one i think the industry knew was probably coming uh, at the end of the day it always, always boils down to whatever is best for the customer if the customer has an agency great use the agency if the customer wants to use an agency great use an agency we're really agnostic from that point of view our kind of service really is around just if they need that helping hand 
to kind of educate themselves or if they're looking to scale up their team internally and they're not quite ready yet, then we can be that bridge to help them get there. And it's not around uh, helping them use the system so much. It's more around helping them educate in, into the category and, and, and educate them internally in terms of how they can manage that program. So the approach is just about simply fulfilling demand that we've seen from our clients, given the choice of support that it fits with the ambition and the kind of dynamics of their structure that's most effective. So we're committed to their success, regardless of the choice they make. Uh, you know, if they want to stick with agency, don't want to stick with agency, just want to do it themselves, great. You know, we're there to kind of help them really. So it kind of just gives them, it gives us more of a breadth of kind of options for the for the client to use. But definitely still very much an advocate of agencies, still very much a partner of agencies. And um, it's ultimately, you know, what, what the client wants to do and yeah. kind of each kind of client's different, I guess. Yeah, I think it's relevant by sector as well when you look at it, to be honest, just in regards to kind of what each sector needs as well. I think that differs uh, quite a bit in, in regards to kind of what their expectations are from an account management point of view and, and what they need from a strategy point of view as well. But it's it, it was certainly interesting to see you guys roll that out. And, and to be honest with you, when you did acquire Pepper Jam, then uh, it was certainly on my mind back in the day, just in regards to kind of the movement into services as well and, and um, aligning with the technology as well, um, to be honest. Well, you know, you, you, when you think about the US and, and, you know, some people would say, oh, you know, walks like a duck, sounds like a duck. It's a duck, right? Here it's a network. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, US is very much a service-led culture. You've got to have a level of service there. You know, and that's why I think that the, the, the purebred affiliate kind of agencies, OPMs, are so strong in, in the US because it's such a service-led uh, market. Yeah. And what also, you know, we really liked about the pepper jam option was that you know they, they their aim is just to help them in house it's it's they don't want to be a forever on service so that mm. is, is very different to a traditional network and that that's you know that kind of model and that way of thinking really appealed to us yeah no, that's interesting obviously we put um feet on the ground within the us as well uh this year with um with the Chicago office as well, and um, it's it's going well. To be honest with you, it's going really well from a from a Silverbeam point of view. I think there's a lot of opportunity there to support kind of US brands either for their US and Canada campaigns or, or global proposition as well. Because obviously we we are a global agency there, so it's uh, it's exciting times to be honest with you on, on that front as well. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I completely agree, actually. So that. Another one for yourself. I know I know you've got your finger on the pulse and a lot of topics. I do I follow you eagerly on LinkedIn. Um, <laughs> all the right um there's a lot of topics uh, which brands are asking about right now. Can you delve into some of those? I know you've been working on some brand to brand projects, for example, which I think the audience would be super interested to hear about. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think for me, to be honest, there's a, there's a lot that everyone can do and talk about within affiliate partner marketing. Um, there's a lot of different routes you can go down with topics and conversations in regards to kind of just traditional affiliate management. You can go on different tangents with voucher, cashback, um, closed user groups, social and so on. But, but for me, I, I try and kind of label everything in regards to kind of key partner channels. So for us, um, traditional affiliate management it is more about kind of just how can we support brands with recruitment, optimization, and budget maximization, which we'll probably touch on a little bit later. Um, th there's been a real growth in, in regards to kind of you utilizing influencers further within the channel as well. Um, I think what we've seen during COVID was just a shift in regards to being happy to pay fixed fees for influencer activity. Um, and, and to be honest, a lot of brands wanted to work on more of a CPA basis and influencers kind of, kind of pivoted to that and came into the channel alongside content as well. So influencer and strategic content partnerships have kind of developed as well in the last few months and it's a key focus point for us. Um, the other kind of area of focus at the minute is app as well, um, is to support brands with kind of not just tracking app sales from an affiliate point of view, to kind of move away from that as well and look further up the user journey towards apps for businesses. So just how can the affiliate partner marketing channel support um, to drive app installs, for example, app download or app conversions uh, and utilizing the affiliate mix and, and partners to do that. I think what a lot of people are focusing on is just the conversion bit, but it's, it's kind of a, an area which is of interest at the minute because 
I feel like paid search, uh, paid social and programmatic was probably plateauing in regards to the performance there. And the affiliate and partner marketing channel could no doubt step in and give an alternative uh, to those companies who focus on the likes of App Install and App Sign Up. But then like the last one that you said there was just in regards to brand to brand. Um, and I think you know that I'm a key advocate for brand to brand partnerships. Um, I think there's a real opportunity for growth. I think it's all about kind of, well, what is a mature affiliate and partner marketing program? And an affiliate and partner marketing program, which is mature, often does utilize brand partnerships within that. Um, so there's a few areas that we focus on at Silverbean here. Um, the first one is just to facilitate um, introductions to other brands. And we, it probably started about 18 to 24 months ago when we were literally just servicing our accounts and we created a list of brands that were open to brand to brand partnerships. Um, and then in January this year, we decided to, to just make that an open network, to be honest, so that everyone could kind of say, yes, I want to be involved in brand to brand partnerships and um, gain free access to the list of brands that also want to be involved and then just ask for for free introductions and, and we'd kind of just facilitate the introduction and then step back from the conversation if we didn't manage it and, and let them kind of prep on to organize a campaign. But then the other side of that is, well, how, how does a brand that's never done brand partnerships actually set up a campaign? Uh, how do they look at their objectives? How do they utilize data to actually find the right partnerships? And then what is campaign management within brand to brand? Like, like how can you actually go about and put it live? So we have our account service um, that we we offer to, to, cl to clients that do want to do brand partnerships. And we do that based on, uh, it's basically three different tiers of involvement, working, working together, us just working uh, independently and so on. Um, and we've also created a how-to guide, which is now on the, the website at Silverbean to kind of just showcase a very simple view on how to enter brand to brand partnerships and, and maybe to just educate the market a little bit more and, and lean on the experiences of other brands and, and people that have worked in the sector for some time to try and educate those brands that maybe are just entering the space for the first time um, as well. So I think that's where we see kind of the, the market going. Um, to summarise, uh, traditional affiliate will always grow. It'll always be about recruitment of optimization. Maybe it's a bit more in regards to kind of managing your, your spend a little bit better. Uh, influences and content is growing. App is a big focus, but brand to brand is a, a very hot topic in the last 12 months. And I think that will continue to be so as well. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. I think it's very much the future of the channel. I think, you know, something we've spoken about for a long time now is brand sharing their customers. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, non competing brands sharing customers because, you know, just because I'm a customer of one brand doesn't mean I can't be a customer of another. And I think that's the uniqueness of that. And I think nothing better really around than just getting to a couple of brands and on the phone or into a room talking about yeah. what, what can be done. And it's, it's so easy as well um, because at the end of the day, then, I mean, we split it into two different types of objectives. It's either monetization of your existing audience further or new customer acquisition. And um, when the brands are well aligned and they're very complementary to the user journey, then in, in all honesty, the user expects that now. The user expects to go onto a website and buy tickets and then be able to buy your transport to the actual um, venue on, on the same user flow because um, it's, it's just pure added value. And, and for, for those brands that do have low margin maybe, it's a great way in order to increase the revenue per customer and to, to, to maximize um, just the business's impact on that user as well. Uh, one thing that we've really loved working on with our brands and, and with partnerizers this year is building out our partner programs to encourage diversification and, and holistic strategies. What are some of the partner types um, that you guys see performing really well or, or new emerging partner types that are making headway in the channel? Good question. Um, so we've covered off a couple of times in, in kind of different talks, but I think, you know, it, it's not new, but content over the last 18 months has, has skyrocketed. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's, it's unsurprising given it's increasing the amount of time people are spending online that, that you know, undoubtedly increased the content consumption. Uh, but what's been fascinating has been to witness that kind of sheer number of applications that we've seen kind of through content publishers and influencers to join uh, our clients programs 
more and more been coming through and this is signaling in we think a real shift in marketers approach to incorporate uh you know this side of the publisher spectrum more on a more for a pay a pay for rather so on than like pay for outcome so rather than a pay for access type basis if you like so you know we're seeing clo partners card link offer partners taking some huge strides in the last 18 months uh yeah. some of our clients are seeing these partners over exceed their targets that they've uh, been asked to deliver and some of the most impressive results across their campaigns have been driven by the clo partners this approach again is simplifying the, simplifying that ask to the consumer and allowing them to benefit from a discount or, or without source, sourcing a coupon code or a cashback deal, for example, it's just tracking across offline as well mm-hmm. and, and providing that to be an invaluable data source for many brands to leverage around the consumer activity. So on-site conversion partners are also uh, performing well for clients. Uh, these partners are very clear in their approach and, and they're kind of helping focus on KPIs like AOV, and providing solutions to challenges like moving surplus stock, you know, in a creative and consumer focused way. But definitely content's been skyrocketing, card link offer type partners. And, you know, I think the, the, the kind of challenge where, where they've kind of really stepped up the CLO partners is in that data is showing that it's incremental as well. You're not just for, for, business, for business that you're already getting, they're able to kind of dial that up and, and get incremental kind of sales from that kind of type of partner as well. So yeah, they they really grown very strongly across the network and the clients that we work with. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think um, especially from a, a content point of view, one hundred percent agree. I think when when brands look at that, th- that how do I diversify my affiliate program away from kind of the generics, uh, and how do I grow it further? To be honest, and and content is often well positioned further up the funnel as well in regards to motor development and research. And what we found, like similar, to, we, we've we've got the mutual client in the Ambassador Theatre Group, and when we do align a, a very strong content strategy um, within affiliate partner marketing to align with SEO and PPC as well, to, to make sure that your content partners are covering uh, certain non-brand keywords, for example, within within the search rankings, it really does kind of just shift the the growth rate of the account, to be honest, and, and the incrementality of the revenue. And, but, but also the reputation of the channel internally as well at a business, um, just in regards to kind of the value it's it's given back um, and and how it's seen as well. And I was having an interesting conversation this week as well in regards to kind of card linked offers and, and obviously the, the partnerships within that. I think the one kind of thing that I'm hearing a little bit about at the minute is, is just in regards to how to attribute them sales, to be honest, because those sales that do happen kind of, uh, through the card, then sometimes it could kind of overwrite a PPC sale or an SEO sale and, and kind of not be purely within the affiliate channel itself. So I think in the next six to 12 months, there'll be probably more conversation around how to um, how to effectively track and measure and where to put your budget when it is in the case of kind of um, conversions happening but it might not report back to, um, to be honest, with the likes of GA or Adobe um, be, because it's, it's it's not that kind of pure online transaction being recorded, if, if that makes sense. No, you're absolutely right, Nick. I think the key to that is getting access to the data and you kind of yeah. have to kind of sit and look and, and look at that data and understand where's the incrementality coming from versus you know was that a paid search conversion coming through and it's only if you can get access to that data and fortunately you know with the clo partners we've got we've got quite you know api integrations in with these guys so we can get access to a lot of data to help match stuff up to make yeah. sure that that wasn't this sale that came in this way and and then you know if there's a 20 percent overlap then you pay 20 percent difference in what you're paying out it, it, yeah, you know, yeah, it, yeah. I'm not saying that way but the key That's is it. getting it, it, it really is as well and to be honest we, we've kind of got this maybe on a on a more traditional network view and the issue is is the data and the to be honest the resource required to get that data as well um, and it's it's a bit of a, a pain shall we say at the minute but it'll be interesting to see how kind of brands can just develop uh, around that and to be honest it's only going to be maybe the enterprise brands that are asking those questions um, for now but it, it will develop moving forwards as well. Um, so it's, it's an interesting one, certainly an advocate for it um, and, and what they can offer in, in regards to kind of being a publisher, 
but um, it's it's an interesting one overall. Cool. Yeah, no, I, I 100%, if you can invest the time, the output pays for itself. 100% yeah. one of guys with it. So, right, one, one for you then, uh, Nick, here is obviously your clients vary in degree of budget and they put uh, that they put towards their partner marketing efforts. How are you making sure to maximize potential for that brand by brand basis? Are there any tools, processes, or goals in place to ensure you're making the most of it? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think um, the first one stems from me being a bit of a tech geek, to be honest with you. So um, I've got a little bit of a habit that when I do convert online and um, I'm kind of a, a frequent shopper, then I will check the, the conversion pixels off brands that go into kind of across the networks and SaaS players. And to be honest with you, we, we've got a big thing at Silver Bean in regards to budget maximization. So it's to review exactly what what information is being sent off to the networks or, or to SaaS providers um, on the conversion page, um, especially in regards to the sale amount and, and kind of if things like um, taxes are included or um, even delivery charges and things like that. And to be honest, there's I, I aggregated it over some time and I think I've done around 30 transactions um, and 60% of those transactions were actually set up incorrectly, um, just in regards to the, the wrong variables were being passed in the wrong places. And it meant that that clients were overpaying in regards to what, what they were processing through the affiliate and partner marketing channel. Now, it's not that much of an issue if you're, you're kind of an SME brand, but as soon as you're an enterprise level brand, then it means that the amount of revenue that you are kind of overspending on is, is significant within that as well. So the first thing really is just to make sure that you've got the foundations of a program set up correctly, that you are kind of tracking and recording the right sale amounts and the right variables within your pixels or server to server integrations um, so that you, your foundations of the program are, are strong. The next thing that we do is to actually look at kind of the commission structure. So look, looking at kind of the, the overall brand objectives, should we say, um, do they want to, say, to push a certain category, for example, uh, within the affiliate program, or do they not want to push a certain category because they know that it sells through, for example. Um, and then the margins as well. So the, the margins by SKU, by category, for example, um, do they vary? So if, if you've got kind of a, a multi-brand retailer, then quite often they'll have different margins per brand. And what that means is that they can't just have a flat commission structure because they'd, they'd be losing margin left, right, and center, um, for, dependent on the sales. So we look to kind of adapt the commission structure based on that as well. And then lastly, based on the publisher types and to be honest, um, how how well the publisher is placed within the user journey, are they kind of more towards mode of development or the more towards purchase, and then looking to weight the overall commission structures based on that as well. So there's a lot of different ways that we can look to kind of maximize um, the actual return on investment within the channel. But to be honest, it's it's not so much about cutting costs, it's about refining the the spend, but then reinvesting that moving forward. So for example, if we do unearth that there's the, the tracking the wrong sale amount, then that is a, a golden opportunity then to invest it further in regards to kind of content partnerships, tendencies with certain traditional affiliates, influencer opportunities and things like that. And that's where we see the growth coming out of the program as well. So no matter what the size of the business is, um, there's always opportunities, especially when you store the right data in the right places in order to kind of um, to grow and, and to reinvest and, and to, to kind of make sure that your return on investment is as strong as possible within the channel as well. Good answer. <laughs> Went off on a bit of a tangent on that one. <laughs> um, another area that we wanted to chat about was, was obviously the, the updates um, in, regard, in regards to kind of privacy updates and iOS 14.5, um, the implications in regards to ITP. Just what is Partnerizer's view and, and how are you guys dealing with all this as well within the channel? Yeah, great question actually, mate. Um, yeah, one, one, I'll, I'll, you know, you could probably rattle on for hours around this, but I'll try and keep it kind of brief and succinct. But, you know, we've obviously seen it coming for a while now, like other networks and SaaS providers. We've, we've got our own purpose-built solution in the Partnerize tag. 
And, and that's just a, a JavaScript tag that brands can put on any of their pages, which acts as a mechanism for setting the local storage cookie. Mm -hmm. uh, the tag allows brands and partners to enable and disable any features that are controlled from within the partnerized tag and to effectively recognize when a partner has influenced the sale. Uh, to be honest, the solution for brands who work with us is pretty simple. But I think what marketers need to be more aware of are the implications a lack of tracking can have on your partner program and the wider marketing efforts. Yeah. So marketers yeah. need accurate attribution of sales to the affiliate channel or any channel for that matter. And they need clear, truthful picture of the channel performance in order to build a strategy like we've just been talking about there. Allocate, spend and create operating leverage. You know, without accurate tracking, you're not able to credit your partners for the value they provide to your program. ITP negatively impacts persistent tracking, creating risk for accurate transaction triggers. You want to make sure that your partners are given appropriate credit by that women get paid uh, so that they can continue to drive activity on behalf of the brand. Precise data, as they say, tells a story and, it, and, and it, inaccurate data uh, won't let you paint a picture of what's really going on in your program. It, instead, it might actually portray declining revenue, which devalues the channel as a part of, of your digital mix and hinders it from gaining the respect it deserves uh, as a true profit center. Yeah, I think it's it's been a, an interesting journey, to be honest, the last six to nine months, just in regards to different approaches in regards to ITP as well and the updates and, and making sure the clients are ready for it. Um, some kind of providers are maybe chasing the tails a little bit just because they've had to update the technology rather than just having the technology ready yeah. and already de deployed as well. Um, but then it's also, as you say, kind of making sure the data is right because uh, brands obviously have their own internal reporting systems now as well. Um, like the likes of GA and Adobe, for example, and it's making sure that the affiliate channel marries up to that as close as possible. And, and especially with the likes of Branch as well these days, um, kind of that, that's another kind of partnership that we need to take into account on within affiliate and partner marketing and, and leveraging their capabilities as well for, for those clients that do have a focus on um, on app and, and downloads and things like that as well. Um, it's, it's an interesting part of it. Yeah, I agree. I, and I guess in line with the tracking piece and making sure we're proving the worth of the channel is the question of incrementality, right? Uh, it always crops up. How are you working with your counterparts at brands to prove the incrementality of the channel to their wider orgs? Yeah, I think the, the first thing, it just goes back to the, the question about to budget maximization as well. I mean, the first thing is making sure that you've got the basics right and the right foundations of the program so that when the, the questioner about incrementality is answered, then you know that you've got the, the foundations right of the program. So making sure that the publishers that you actually work with are, are right for the brand. Um, they're, they're in line with the brand guidelines, for example, and that they're promoting you in, in the right manner. Um, the next thing is to make sure that your commission structure is in line with kind of the, the brand objectives as well, um, in, in line with kind of margins and things like that. Um, there's, there's other things that we can do as well, especially in regards to APIs. So to bring as much data in as possible, either at purchase or post-purchase. I know that we, we both work with the likes of Trainline, for example, and they do a lot of, of good things with APIs to kind of bring in um, into the into the platform post purchase like 24 hours after um, in regards to kind of more information on the overall user in regards to new and existing customer for example they can then bring in things like the lifetime value and be able to compare that to other channels as well on a publisher basis which is really insightful so the idea of more data can can kind of support the the questions in regards to incrementality and to be honest with you to have a meaningful conversation with other channels so to be able to speak well with your kind of counterparts in regards to PPC and SEO and email, for example, or the digital marketing manager. Um, the next thing is to make sure that the data aligns with the likes of Google Analytics and Adobe. Like, there's so many brands that, I mean, a 10% variance can be kind of acceptable, but, but there's so many brands out there that might have a variance of 30, 40% in regards to kind of what's being tracked within the affiliate channel in comparison to the likes of GA and Adobe. And if we're all honest, then um, the the kind of the CMO will no doubt be using the GA and Adobe numbers when it comes to kind of performance and also um, assigning budget and, and finance, for example. 
And, and then the last thing is obviously using the network and, and the SaaS provider in regards to the technologies that they offer in, in regards to kind of incrementality and looking at the user journey. Um, outside of that, then um, there's a there's a tool called Odyssey that we use at Silverbeam. And basically that looks at the overall attribution of the channel as well. And we can kind of look at um, how the affiliate channel is comparing with other digital marketing channels as well, which is insightful. So I think there's a range of points there in regards to kind of better use of technology, looking at APIs, third party providers, and just making sure that the basics are done right and that you're aligning with um, your own kind of Google Analytics and Adobe figures uh, yourselves as well first, really. Yeah, good answer. Um, I mean, we, we, we've got a shared client as well that um, has had the, the issues of fraud in the past as well, to be honest. So um, kind of looking at fraudulent activity within the channel and to be honest, like what are the solutions around that in regards to, to stopping fraud? Uh, Brand Verity obviously announced at PI Live Global in, in regards to kind of their freemium offering, um, which Brand Verity was obviously an acquisition of you guys. Was it around 12? 18 months ago now. Um, yeah, he was, yeah. yeah. Was. Um, but, but just in regards to kind of um, what is that freemium off offering about and, and how does it help partnerize and, and the clients that you guys are working with as well? Yeah, no problem at all, mate. I think, um, no, I think if, you, if you go back to like Brandberry in, in terms of what they do, um, if you look at the channel, you know, one of the beautiful aspects of the channel is that it enables brands to benefit from promotional methods that haven't yet been invested in or figured out. You know, it's such a fast moving channel yeah. and uh, affiliates are, you know, super innovative and uh, very entrepreneurial in terms of how they approach things and, and in, a, in a good way, not necessarily in a, in a way to think, you know, how can I get the most out of this in, in a cheeky way? Um, you know, and if you look back to day one, you, uh, the, you know, the big affiliates were all paid search guys. Right, as simple as yeah. that. You know, they they jumped on paid search way before the brands had. Yeah. Great example of, of just being first mover in that in that space and being able mm -hmm. to capitalize. And then as brands caught up, you know, they started to understand. You know, as competition in paid search heated up, it became inc increasingly less profitable for affiliates to run paid search campaigns on behalf of their advertisers. Yeah, and it was you know there's, there's, there's one exception to that, and that was branded keywords uh, on paid search that remained hugely profitable to affiliates. But a minority of affiliates realize that their branded traffic is relatively inexpensive uh, and uh, as a high level of intent. Uh, yeah. so, so some of those uh, affiliates obviously, you know, would bid on brands when they weren't supposed to. Um, and, and obviously a lot of affiliates can bid or bid on a brand and have, and have approval from a, from a brand to do so as part of a wider strategic piece that they work for. But I think, you know, one day they had uh, SERPs to, to themselves and the next day, comp you know, they've had the competition from all these affiliates and even find their own ads getting displaced by affiliate ads, you know, that kind of built up to kind of figure out, you know, what's going on. And I think, you know, 15 years later, you know, branded search is, is it prevalent today as it was 13 years ago, maybe more so as affiliates have, got, have gotten even better at search and users have grown more comfortable online and the automation has allowed even long tail keywords to be profitable. But given potential threats, uh, the cost of losing affiliate traffic it, it can be quite expensive to a brand uh, on that paid search piece. So I think that what brands tell us uh, and when they discuss the reservations around monitoring is that you know three these reasons come up they don't have the budget they don't understand the impact of the problem or the individual bonus plans create misaligned incentives right so it can, becomes too tempting to bid on the brand so these excuses are exactly just that you know, they're, they're excuses and in the age of kind of high budget scrutiny and brands you know brands can't let can't let the affiliates carry on with that unless of course they kind of proved that as an industry we've been getting better at kind of counting down on this so we want it we we want our channel to occupy its rightful place within the budgets and the programs and we need to solve these issues once and for all uh, i think we fundamentally believe that this is something that every brand should be should have every program in the world should have some level of monitoring going on for, for their trademark and brand protection you know going on online and that's where brand, brand uh, freemium came from, from Brand Verity. That's why it's free. You know, we believe that there's a massive need in the industry for every affiliate program to have some level of monitoring. Mm -hmm. uh, we've created this limited free to, to, to service for Brand Verity so that they can 
help brands understand the potential threats that can arise specifically from the affiliate programs and yeah. get hold of that on top of that and help manage it better. And, you know, there's certain practices around that freemium model. And, you know, if they want to use it more, obviously, then there's a paid model on top of that. But really, it's just to encourage as many brands as possible to, to get onto that kind of scrutiny piece and, and ensure that they're not, they're not paying for stuff that they shouldn't be paying for. Yeah. I think that, that'll kind of move us on to uh, just how, how the affiliate and partner marketing channel is now kind of working alongside the likes of SEO, PPC, email, yeah. crawl. Like, and, and to be honest with you, probably about five or six years ago, I kind of feel that the affiliate and partner marketing channel was always outside of the mix in, in regards to kind of, it wasn't core to the digital marketing strategy, should we say. Um, PPC and SEO always used to work well together um, and, and the teams would work well together, but affiliate was always on the outskirts of that maybe. And, and now it's, it's kind of support in that conversation in regards to kind of a more rounded view on affiliate and partner marketing within the digital strategy how the affiliate and partner marketing channel can support the other channels, but then how the other channels can kind of learn from what's happening within the affiliate channel as well, um, and moving from that. Yeah, I think you're right. There's always, there's always been a resistance, I think, from the kind of traditional kind of um, guys in this channel who kind of track and measure all that because, you know, they're so geared towards winning last click and they want that last click and they want it for their channel not other channels and i think you know as soon as you collaborate with that there's there's always that fear and risk of how we maybe we'll reduce some of these last clicks that we've been getting and the whole commercial model was built upon but you know this we're seeing more and more brands like like you say you know they're embracing more of a cross-channel conversation in order to better understand the impact each of those channels is having with that and, and to help share ideas and help share like what is going on in in this digital space and I think that's where our agencies particularly come very strongly because it's all under one umbrella. You know, you, you, you're moving as one. It's like that Sparta type mentality, right? Stronger together, all in one place. And that, and that really helps. Absolutely. We, we made a little joke before this as well, before we started recording that it's, it's been there where, where I am now. And um, thankfully, the Vin Menard came just at the start of the recording, but the recycling guys have just come along now. So sorry, sorry if you guys have. I've just been drowned out by uh, by some noise outside my window today as well. So I, I had Sainsbury's being delivered early. I'm sure you probably had a few balls clanging on the floor in the background anyway, so uh, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> the, the joys of working from home, especially on a really warm day as well, when uh, we, we have to keep the windows open. But, um, <laughs> So Nick, Nick, one for you. How, how do you position the partner channel for your, for your, for your uh, clients and brands alongside other marketing initiatives that they're running? What kind of intersections do you see? Yeah, um, for, for us, to be honest, uh, working alongside other digital marketing channels is key. And, and to be honest with you, it also shows the, the maturity of the, the channel that we operate as well. So um, we, we, we've kind of talked about our progression model at Silverbean in the past as well, just in regards to kind of how a brand can kind of go from uh, no campaign whatsoever to a market leading campaign overall. A market leading campaign in our view, um, the, the affiliate channel is, is kind of working very, very closely with other digital marketing channels like SEO, PPC, Crow, email, and it's supporting them um, as, as well as learning from the campaigns and kind of acting holistically. Um, we're seeing a growing need for um, for brands to work well with other digital marketing channels. Um, so we, we talked about kind of content, for example, earlier, and the the, the growth of content within the channel as well. Um, what what we're seeing from a from an agency point of view is that when we do align content with an SEO and PPC strategy for the brand in regards to kind of non-brand keywords, then to be honest, we're seeing real growth in, in along that, but in order to, to put that strategy together, we need to work closely with SEO and PPC because they've already got a lot of data in regards to what are the non-brand keywords that are of um, significant value. So which ones are kind of um, high converting, um, high search and, and kind of in high competition as well, because as soon as we can kind of activate an affiliate campaign to maybe knock down your competitor one or two places, then it does drive real results overall, really. Um, from, a, from a campaign perspective as well, um, once the affiliate and partner marketing channel is, is more kind of in line with the digital marketing and seen holistically, it's just so much easier in regards to kind of campaign planning as well. So making sure that the affiliate marketing channel 
has been given a signed budget, for example, um, in order to support with campaigns, but but also that crossover in regards to how influencers can support the brand uh, from a brand awareness point of view, maybe, and content partners as well. So for us as an agency, it's always a big focus to work well with the other digital marketing channels, both from a reputation point of view, but then also from a desired outcomes and, and kind of um, just, just revenue in increase as well. We, we often find that those brands that are aligning the channel with the other digital marketing channels are, are growing and, and they're growing stronger uh, in, in regards to the revenue growth. Um, one last thing as well is just the, the utilization and learning from analytics and Crow as well within the team. Quite often, the Crow team will focus on the full user journey across um, all digital marketing channels. But um, what we're seeing now is that, especially for key partners, um, then utilizing a Crow approach to just the, the publisher user journey, um, it again proves dividends because it increases their conversion rate and can help them increase their average order value as well. So it's it's a nice tactic to kind of increase the revenue from key partners within the affiliate and partner marketing channel as well itself. Gotcha. And then brush my ego. What elements of partnerized platform are, uh, are <laughs> significant for optimizing program management? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll go for this one then. So um, I think first of all, commissioning and, and being able to flex commission, uh, to be honest, based on the variables that you can kind of bring into the channel. Uh, obviously, from an integrations point of view, you guys enable um, un unlimited tracking um, from a variables point of view. Um, so it means that everything can be brought into the network, but but then everything can also be commissioned as well within the platform. Which, which is great from a kind of a, a margin point of view and a commission structure rules point of view as well. Um, the other side of that is just the ease of reporting and to be honest, be able to pivot on data. Um, we mentioned about um, the Ambassador Theatre Group earlier, for example, which is a, a venue, uh, a box office client of ours. Um, they can basically identify and commission and report based on a seat at an individual venue for a night uh, and it, it's just so granular, to be honest, just in regards to be able to report and, and provide insights back to the client. And then the last thing is utilizing APIs to update sales, um, post purchases as well, and, and being able to use that data in regards to answering questions in regards to lifetime value, and then being able to kind of put that back into the, the strategic objectives of the campaign as well itself. So for us, it, it's all about kind of um, making use of as much data as possible and the ease of the platform in order to make actionable insights on the back of it as well. Great. Thanks, mate. It's good to know. Um, I know that there's been kind of a, a lot of questions from clients around benchmarking. Um, how is Partnerize approaching this and, and what data do you guys kind of provide overall uh, for brands and then the industry as well, just in regards to the, the insights that you guys can give um, to, to clients across the, the channel really? Yeah, that's a good question, mate. It's it's something that, it's something that we get asked daily, and it's a big reason why we took the learnings from um, Pepper Jam when we acquired them to replicate their sales and marketing index into our own partnership growth index. So this looks at trends in revenue, um, the drivers of this AOV clicks conversion rates on a rolling basis, and it's updated monthly to give some insight into the channel using our own benchmark data. Uh, it's not conclusive. I don't think any, anyone's benchmark data is, is fully conclusive, obviously, but it's helpful specifically for brands looking to gauge how others in the industry are approaching the channel. Um, we're also hoping to expand this out to mirror the original index more so we'll focus on partner types and their performance on a vertical and even sub-vertical basis. So we're getting there, uh, we're, we're producing it, it's going to get better, it's going to get more detailed um, and it's something that we're working on and will continue to evolve. Sounds good. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing more from that side of things as well, uh, just, just in regards to kind of getting insights and being able to benchmark as well uh, for for clients um, overall? 100%. Uh, yeah, and, and we look for, we can't wait to get it all done and ramped up um, to where we need to, want, where we want to get it to actually. Yeah. Uh, another one for you, how are you seeing industries develop, how are you seeing the industry develop over the next 12 months? What are the, what are you advising brands to spend their resources on both in regards to time and money? Yeah. 
I think this is always going to be bespoke to client. And, and to be honest, that's why we have the progression model at Silverbean as well, to be able to kind of audit campaigns to see where they are in regards to the maturity of, of affiliate and partner marketing for them as an individual brand, and then for us to kind of suggest the right strategy for them. I think what we're seeing at the minute, um, especially in regards to mid-market to enterprise brands, um, is the, the need to diversify the traditional affiliate program, to be honest. Um, so in regards to kind of the sectors of thought was moving forwards, um, it goes back to the, the further investment in regards to content partnerships, um, which is more strategic content partnerships though, kind of how can we leverage the relationships to align with SEO and PPC and, and support digital PR, for example, as well. Um, then we're seeing the growth in regards to influencer activity, again, based on a CPA or kind of fixed fee investments as well, kind of doing uh, more, more, more kind of brand led to performance as well. And then the last two is uh, app campaigns and brand partnerships as well. Um, so we're, we're going to see the continuation really of brand to brand partnerships. I think it's gained a lot of momentum in the last six to 12 months. And to be honest now, brands are not so much doing the talking, they're doing more action and kind of getting campaigns live, which is great to see as well. And I think that app is going to continue to develop as well. Um, so the need to utilize the affiliate mix to drive both app install uh, and app sign up maybe and for the affiliate and partner marketing channel to, to maybe reputable enter that space more because at the minute so many brands are relying on um, paid social and programmatic in order to drive either app install or sign up as well and I think the affiliate and partner marketing channel can certainly support with that as well. Great answer. Um, the, the last question really is just in regards to automation. Um, it's, it's been a, a big focus point for a lot of brands, um, just in regards to making sure that they're, they're spending the, the time wisely on uh, affiliate and partner marketing. Um, to what level do, do you think that we need to automate? Um, and will the industry at some point become fully automated? Just, just what are your thoughts on that? Uh, no, I don't think the industry will ever be fully automated. Um, because it's, it's, it's always been a, and it'll probably always will be a relationship based industry. There'll always be a level of contact, uh, and communication and relationships being built up within the, the brands to the partners and vice versa. But I think though, if you, if you break it down into sections where it can, you know, this, this is often kind of relates to what's the difference between kind of SaaS versus a network and that kind of just question. If you break it down, what can be automated? If you, if you look at the very beginning, how do you get partners onto your program? that can be automated and being able to automate different paths to get different partners onto programs, right? Because on, we all know onboarding an influencer is not the same as onboarding a cashback affiliate. You know, they're two very different beasts. You don't, you want, you, you're not going to onboard a bank through a, through a typical publisher sign-up tunnel because all of a sudden they're going to get a thousand emails a day from different programs. It just doesn't work. So that whole automation piece, depending on the partner time and how you onboard and how you get them in, that can be fully automated. And, and that kind of can, that can advance in terms of how you're working and who you're working with. And then when, when you kind of look to kind of the more kind of day-to-day -day admin things around the reporting, pre-scheduling reports, making sure you've got all the data there, you're cutting out an email asking someone to make that report for you. It's already built, it's there. That kind of simple admin beast, they can all, all be automated. Approvals can be automated mm -hmm. through the API, you know, and, and automating, uh, you know, if someone's bought 10 items in a basket and they return five, updating that, updating the revenue amount and updating the commission amount can all be automated through the technology. So there's a lot that can and should be automated. Uh, I think, you know, that's, I think, you know, resource businesses don't the more you automate the more you need that kind of resource to do that sort of element and really what you want the people working on your program is, is, the, is the execution of the strategy yeah. it's talking to different different partners and, and creating different one-to-one -one type partner mixed strategies and how you can execute them and understanding which 
the value this partner plays in, at what point in the conversion funnel so you can reward them fairly. And you can automate the view of that and, an under, and the understanding of that, okay? It's about, again, it's, um, it's being able to see that really easily within the data all in one place so that you can take execute more smartly, you can pay more accurately. And all that is driven by automation because you don't want to be pulling different columns together from spreadsheets pulling data from here and pulling data from there and then analyze because by the time you've done that and by the time you've analyzed it you've missed it you've missed it all, all of a sudden you're in the next quarter and you and you're trying to execute another type of plan so that kind of that whole automation piece yeah 100 we can automate a lot more there's still much more room for automation but it will always be a relationship channel it will always be and there'll always be people involved in that 100 percent but there's so much more that can be done on the automation piece to streamline it, make it more efficient and, and allow people to focus more on the execution, the relationships and be more innovative and, and growing the channel for the, for the better is what I believe. No, absolutely. I think um, just, just from our side, to be honest with you, we, we want our account managers and seniors to be able to kind of, to, to execute the day-to-day, -day, but then also have the time to look up and, and look at the overall strategy. And, and to be honest with you, to be, to be able to provide strategic direction in line with the, the brand's requirements as well. And, and automation certainly helps with that um, in order to continue to grow the program. Because quite often, it's not about just how do we hit year one target? Like, to be honest, you, you could no doubt hit year one target quite a lot of the times for clients. It's about, well, how do we get to year two, year three? Because a lot of brands now are wanting very high growth and um, we need to be able to deliver the strategy in order to, to do that, to be honest. And it's all about kind of being able to look up and plan and plan effectively as well. Yep, yeah, couldn't agree more. Nick, look, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And thank you for your insights, your data and your knowledge that you've shared with us in the audience. It's been an absolute privilege. Uh, and thank you as well for our audience for tuning in and watching as well. Uh, stay tuned in. Much more uh, valuable sessions coming up. And I hope you enjoyed them all. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nick.